that straggle on in, we'll be able to see um, from the recording where we left off. So hello, everyone. Welcome. My name is Destiny Kano, and I'm really excited to share with you today more about WordPress 6.1 also known as uh, Misha, <laughs> if you've seen the release notes on that. I appreciate everyone participating in the introductions. Um, I also wanna go over a few housekeeping items here. Uh, the live transcription has been enabled. So feel free to turn that on so that you can follow with the captions. Uh, when it comes to questions, I love when you just, you know, either in the chat, you share what questions you might have as I'm going through the content, or if you feel comfortable speaking, feel free to unmute and ask your question aloud. Um, there's no dumb questions, quote unquote dumb questions, so feel free to ask anything. I'm happy to go through it. And if I don't know the answer to it, there are plenty of smart and capable people in this room that should be able to answer it for us today. And if not, I will go find that answer and follow up in an email um, along with the recording and the slides. Um, but while you're not talking, please mute your mic so that we don't have any background noise. And I do want to plug that these online workshops are run by volunteers. You don't have to facilitate a whole work workshop on your own. I can understand it being maybe intimidating for your first time, but um, you can also co-host. So today I don't have a co-host for this session. So maybe that will be you next time if you're interested in just helping facilitate in that um, aspect. Okay, so getting started today, what we're going to be going over is just a general overview of some of the new features that are included in 6.1. As I noted, there's, there's quite a lot, especially developer specific ones. The ones I'm showing today aren't going to be too developer specific, um, as this is like a beginner course, so it's going to be focused more around the user experience. So what's in the back end when you're in the WP admin. I might throw a little bit of information around about uh, theme.json improvements, but we won't be diving into any files today. Um, after I've shown that overview, we're going to look in my test environment of what that actually looks like when you're in the WP admin itself. So we'll get a bit of explanation and then play as well, and I'll try to tackle some of the requests that we had from the meetup group um, about what you all wanted to see, but feel free as we're going through it to ask other questions. Maybe you wanna see something else that we haven't covered today. I'm happy to look at that together with you as well. Okay, so getting into it, the first thing I wanted to definitely showcase is the new default theme that comes with this update. That is 2023. And what's really special about this new theme is that it comes with 10 community-made style variations. As you can see in this GIF, I'm flipping through just a couple of them, but these are all new style variations that you can choose right from the get-go of having installed this theme. So that is already putting at your hands a lot of stylization power that we didn't quite have before. Uh, 2022 had about three variations um, and now we've got 10 to play with. So um, at the beginning of creating your site, you already have a lot of more design tools at the ready. Something special about it as well is that it's tagged as accessibility ready. So this means it's going to meet the guidelines for being accessible on the web. And I took a look in the WordPress theme repository and found that there are only four block themes that are tagged as accessibility ready. So I really appreciate that the WordPress.org team put this at the forefront with this new theme. I'm gonna share the link to those for you. That's 2023. Here's where you can view the rest of the accessibility ready themes of the four. I'm sure there will be more along the way, especially if someone creates a child theme out of, out of 2023. And then if for folks who are just kind of curious about what it takes to become accessibility ready, I did also want to share this link that details what um, checklists and review processes are required to meet that standard. Okay, so aside from an amazing new theme at our disposal, we also have some expanded site template options that are pretty exciting. 
Um, specifically, if you are someone who can create custom post types for your site, you can then create custom templates for those post types now. Um, there's also taxonomy templates at your disposal and then page and post specific templates that you can create, which is pretty neat. It's hard to tell what that means from this picture, uh, but I'll show you when we're in the back end what that will look like. Essentially, if I have one post and I want to have a template just for that post, now you can do that. Before it was, you know, all of your posts had to adopt essentially the same template, um, but going forward, you can more easily add a new template for one specific post. Also in here that we'll review in the, in the site editor um, is a new view site link, which will allow you to kind of, as you're editing, flip through and see what all of those templates look like. And I'm keeping my eye on the chat. So if you have any questions at all, feel free to write them or unmute and ask. Another area I wanted to point out that we're not going to dig into much today because it is in the classic theme and would require coding is that now with 6.1, if you still have a classic theme, you can actually enable uh, block template parts within that theme. So with this update, that means that even these traditional WordPress themes can use block-based template parts, like in this example here, um, this is a classic theme that has this enabled, and now they're able to create template parts like a footer. Um, and there was more in that list, header, et cetera. Um, so what you would do essentially is enable the feature via the block template parts theme support flag in your themes function.php file. And for anyone that is more technically savvy than me, um, there is a guide that shows you exactly how to do that. So if you're like, hey, this block theme 2023 thing is, is cool, but I still like my classic theme. That being said, maybe I wanna play with some template parts. This guide I just shared with you from the Gutenberg Times shows you how to enable this for your site so that you can play around with template parts on your classic theme. Next, we also have a refined and more consistent experience when interacting with the design tools. Um, and this, this part is really exciting to me because I like playing around with images and the look of the site myself. And this expanded tools includes things like um, typography, spacing and layout, improved controls. There's more minute settings that you can adjust for the border radius, um, margins, and paddings going forward. Um, so for example, if we're thinking about this in use with a block itself, um, now you have border controls for image blocks and column blocks, and you also have axial spacing for the gallery block. So when we get into the back end, I'll show you when we, um, what you can do with like an image block, for example, now. Um, and I think you'll, you'll really enjoy the new features that have been added here. It just gives you a lot more flexibility and design choice here with your site and how you like to compose your, your pages and posts. This one is gonna be obvious when we're in the back end, but I did want to showcase that there is now an improved post settings panel. So on the left-hand side of this image was the old way of how it was displayed. It's kind of a bit more clunky. We have the post format, the suggestion, all kind of clumped in one space. Um, but what they've done is essentially cleaned it up. So there's more of a, um, a stacking way of viewing things. So now instead of the slug field being right next to slug, it's right under it. It gives it a bit more order um, and also more spacing. So it's more visually obvious what you're, you're adjusting going forward. So for people that thought the other one was not so fun, I hope this is a, <laughs> a good update for you. Next up, we have improved block locking. Um, this option specifically applies to the groups. When you, so when you group a bunch of blocks together, a cover block and column blocks, 
And this just allows you to um, essentially apply locking to all the blocks that are inside those groups. So this is good for when you don't want a, a single a set of blocks, excuse me, to move on the page. It doesn't block anyone from adjusting the content of what's in the block. So be mindful of that. And I can show what I mean by that as well as we get in there in like a cover block, for example. Um, in my previous session, I was informed that they are working on admin locking versus if you're an author, for example, because maybe you don't want to have every role on your Word set, WordPress site to be able to unlock <laughs> what you have locked. So that's something I, I'm not going to deeply cover today, but I, I wanted to share that with you all as well, since it was something I learned in my previous session. Okay, so next we also have fluid typography and spacing. So what does that mean? I, I did a little bit of digging here because I was like, I thought it was already, you know, respons responsive. I think that's kind of what, when we look at this image here, we think of like, it's just responsively moving to the size of the screen. Um, so what this introduction of fluid type Typography feature does is it allows the theme authors to decide to define font sizes that adapt to the viewport. Um, I guess thinking back like breakpoints, right? So the theme author would have to opt into this feature via the theme.json file. And then they can provide a set of minimum and maximum values that calculate the output of the typography set. So this allows folks to set as it's minimizing or increasing how the text um, or content will display going forward. So that's pretty, pretty phenomenal, especially as you get from this very tiny screen uh, to the desktop screen. All right, and last on my list, I wanted to share a bit more about the enhanced blocks we also have, um, specifically the quote block, list block, and then also the navigation blocks. They've all received a sort of editorial and setting management improvements, uh, respectively. So the quote block will now allow you to add nested blocks. So that means you could add the new list block inside the new quote block. And you can see in my example here, we have a quote block with a header shopping list and then a list. And then I, I went a little wild here and added another quote block inside of the quote. I don't know if you would want to actually do that, but it is now available to you. It kind of adds an interesting style to the post too. The list is a little hard to see here. So I'll be more specific when we're in a post that has a list, but essentially when you are looking at a list in the list view, now under the list block itself, each list item will be its own kind of um, sub block in a way. So you can more easily move your list items around going forward. And the menu itself, the selection in management interface has been moved to a dedicated section in the block settings. So you can see on the right, I'm playing with the block settings for the navigation here, adjusting what type of um, menu can be selected. So that those are settings that are now in that section. And also the mobile menu system has received an upgrade, uh, which includes new features such as including different icon options. So if you're tired of the hamburger menu, um, this might be something for you to explore further. Okay, so those were the heavy hitters. I was going, I'm gonna discuss further today and explore with you today in the sandbox environment. Um, do we have any questions before I move forward with that? And I'm also happy to go back and re-explain anything that I may have been too fast or not clear on.
All right. I got a sleepy crowd. <laughs> All right. Well, let's move on and I'll, I'll keep monitoring the chat, but I do want to share the demo setup I'm going to be using today. I like to use local for my local WordPress environment. And I will be using the 2023 theme that we were talking about earlier in the call. I will also be using the latest version of WordPress. So 6.1.1, 6.1 um, came out November 2nd, 6.1.1 came out on the 15th. So just two days ago, I like to use the latest releases whenever I'm doing these sessions. Here are the links to those. And then because you don't have to do everything my way, there might be other options that you enjoy much more. I wanted to share a couple other options available to you for your local setup and then also uh, the theme. Not every theme is gonna have 10 style variations though, be mindful of that. So um, I'm specifically using 2023 because it's tied to 6.1, but I did include in the other theme choices another accessibility theme, ready theme called Jace at the top. So um, in case you wanna explore what that looks like with another theme that's not 2023, um, here's some other options for you. All right, so I'm going to switch here to my site. Let's open the screen a bit bigger. So I've got my site here, aptly named 6.1. So this site, all I've done to it is essentially booted it up and then a, it came with the 2023 theme already installed. And I just added a few pages and posts. So, so far this, it would only usually have, if it's fresh install, um, this would be gone. So it would have the hello world. And then it looks like there's got any book recommendations as the new setup. But I'm gonna go directly into the dashboard here. You can see all of the welcome notes for, for this update. And first I'm gonna to go to appearance themes. And you can see here, um, you do get four themes attached, but I'm using 2023. So this is the one we're gonna be working with today. So from appearance, I'm gonna jump right into the editor. So we can play around with a few of those style variations that I was telling you about. So once we're in the site editor here, um, you can definitely open up this list view in the top left corner to see what your site is composed of. But in order to see the style variations, this half moon icon in the right is where you wanna go. And these are global styles. So when you click on browse styles and you click on another style, this is gonna affect your whole site. So choose one that makes you happy. <laughs> As you see, when you change the theme variation, the style variation, it's not like just the colors are changing. Each theme has its own um, composition of the content, they sometimes change how the font is displayed, the font family. So definitely take your time. There's a good variety in this pack um, to get you started in your initial design. Some of them now even come with a background that's not just a color, which is pretty wicked. This canary one is very interesting to me because it comes with the default image here with the radius on the left adjusted already. That's something I'm gonna show you within a, a post, um, but I thought it was cool that they're already hinting that that's something that you can do here. So yeah, feel free to pick whichever makes you happy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna choose this marigold here. And that's essentially where your style, your 10 style variations are gonna live. If you haven't explored this before, you can go a bit further and make more adjustments after you've selected the default setting here. So if you're like, hey, I would like to adjust the size of my buttons, which there's a button on the bottom. Now this is a universal button setting that was um, introduced here too. 
and just ad adjust the size. That wasn't doing anything, so of the text. <laughs> there you go, they changed the font here. So that's something you can further explore in these settings. If you wanna change the text, you can do that here as well. Um, there's many options available to you, including the colors. Oh, do we have a question, Andre? Maybe a accidental unmute. I'm gonna meet you. Okay, so, and then if you're ever like, hey, I went a little wild, I don't actually want all these changes. Um, if you click the, hor the vertical dots right by styles, you can reset to the defaults here and then go back to the style that you had. Okay, so jumping from the site editor to the templates here. This is where you can now add your um, custom templates for pages and theme, or sorry, pages and posts, not themes. So um, for example, if I click on add new and then page, now I have an option to use a new template for a specific page, which we couldn't do before. And I remember in the previous calls, people were asking about this as well. So I hope you're watching, your, your wish was heard. And now if you're like, hey, this one page, I maybe you have a site that only has five pages and you want each page to be unique. Um, now you can do that with this, this template editor. So now I am directly impacting the layout of my succulents page if I start editing this. Um, and to double back just one moment, so we can pull up that page here. Let's just do view page. We can have this in the corner. I'm gonna pull this up here. So succulents page it has the title, has the content, and I don't have any comments, so that's not gonna show. I'm gonna dump, jump back into the editor and then templates. And you can see, even though I didn't change anything for this template yet, because I said add new and I clicked on it, it's already there ready to be um, adjusted further. So are these new template types available in all templates? So I believe you're asking, oh, okay, <laughs> no worries. I was like, ooh, that's a, that's a riddle. I thought you were asking if um, all templates had like a, a specific page or post. Anyway, themes. So are these new template types available in all themes? This feature, yes, it shouldn't be, um, I believe, the specific to 2023. I believe it was packaged with 6.1, but it wouldn't be available for classic themes, for example. It would have to be a block theme. And actually, we don't have to wonder. Let me, I'm gonna go to add new. I went to parents themes. And if you go to the, Full site editing. Oh, why am I having trouble seeing this right now? You know what? Let me just select Jace because I know that's a <laughs> full site editing theme. So if I install Jace, yeah, no worries, Martin. Let's, we don't have to wonder. We can actually test this real quick. So I've installed Jace, it's a block theme. I'm going to go to the editor. I'm gonna go over to templates. And then you can see here, my succulents template is gone. But if I go to add new page, I still have the option to add a new template page for succulents with this Jace theme. So I believe we just confirmed, yes, it's available across block themes. Now, let me just double back here and put our 2023 back on. 
because maybe some people are, oh, there's two Martins, <laughs> uh, wondering, oh no, did your other template that was tied to your other theme disappear now that you changed themes? No, it sticks with your theme. So we can see here, I haven't gone in and created the succulent page theme again. It's just available to me. So uh, I know a lot of folks when changing themes get scared about loss of creations. Um, so rest assured that it'll save with the theme as long as you don't delete that theme, um, it should still be there waiting for you. But yeah, if we wanted to here, um, looking at the composition of this page, maybe for some reason, I don't want a footer on this page. Flipping back, if I look, I have my little footer here. So if I save this and it will save my template page or succulents page, and then I do a little refresh here, bam, my footer is gone. But what should come to be is that if I go to a different page, like sample page, it should still have the footer. And you can see that here. So that is pretty neat in, in my mind. Uh, you have way more flexibility for your pages and posts so how you want that to be displayed to whoever is visiting your site. OK, so that's the templates. The template parts um, that I shared was about classic themes, so we won't go into that today. But we can now start digging a bit into some of the upgraded design tools available. So. What I've already done here is just created um, a couple posts about succulents. <laughs> and clicking here, I like to keep the list view open just so I can see the composition of the page. But for example, if I wanted to, and there's many ways to insert something new here, I like to do a backslash and then you can search. I'm going to do an image here. And I've uploaded a couple. So let's play with a landscaped one. Here we go. So this is an image block. And looking to the right here, you have some of the old haunts, you know, just rounding if you wanted, if you want to adjust the quality here, the image size, the dimensions, clicking here. Ooh, that's a little too wild and big. Let's put it back at 25% so we can see it nicely. But if you scroll down a little further down here, you see border and radius. Um, radius used to be just this, um, but now with the enhanced tooling, you can select certain portions to make radial. Um, actually, let's go a little bolder here. So if I didn't want the whole thing to be rounded, I could do just the left, top left, or the bottom right maybe a little deeper. So this gives you already some interesting design things that you can do with your site. Um, you still have the option to do a wide width or full width for your site. So some, in a way, you can almost manipulate it to be a, a rather pretty um, cover image at the top of your, your um, page here. And I think there was an option for if we wanted, maybe we could do, if you wanted to get a little bit more interesting here, you can insert before. I'm going to pull up a cover block. And let's just do a color here. Um, and we're already seeing more dimension options. I'm going to dunk this image inside this cover remove this paragraph, paragraph, and now we have, it's a bit of a dark image, but I don't know, pardon me, open, have a little lighter image here. So now that's in here, but we can play around with more design tools here, like the padding. If I wanted to space everything out within this block, that's an option to me now. I think there was, yeah, and there's margin settings as well. Um, padding, 
affects the inside of the block, margin affects the outside of the block. I was having trouble remembering that earlier, um, but if that's something you also want to mess with, you can see it's creating space around the block. Um, so that is also now an option to you to either do universally with this slider or more granularly with the um, top and bottom here. So Martin says they were just playing with the new image functionality today for a client. And they loved it. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I think you're just getting more flexibility and creativity unlocked with all of these new updates. So definitely keep playing around with it. Uh, there's def more to come for sure. Um, while we're in here, I did want to show what that improved settings panel also looks like within the post. Um, I'm going to just pull everything is just goes down the line now. So you don't have to try to squeeze something in from the side. Um, it should be pretty uniform going forward. I'm not sure wherever that what WordPress version everyone's joining, but even now the URL, for example, is up here. So if you just click here, you can adjust the permalink of your, your post. Publish settings. And you can even adjust the templates. Before it wouldn't say um, in the template section what template it was, but now it's it'll say the default template here. So that's a good, that's a better visual cue. You can also um, add a new template directly from here as well or edit. Okay, so I'm going to update that. And I had another page. Okay, so we have a question. So before I move along, I'll, I'll answer that. When you upload an image on WordPress, it can be huge. The system will shrink it depending on the image size where it is displayed on the page. Ah, uh, that is a good question. So we can actually test this out. Um, looking, let me pull up my, my little downloads here. Sorry, I want to just pull them into. Um, succulents. Sorry, I don't mean to be. Uh, secretive here, I'm just adding those succulent photos into a folder so you can see it more clearly. Where are you? Okay, so hope everyone can, oops, not rename, can see my folder that I've just dragged into the, the frame here. But getting info, for example, should be able to see, or even just hovering over, we should be able to, see, oh, let me just do a list view, that's easier. So this is the image I uploaded this um, from Unsplash, this USF one. It was originally 1.2 megabytes JPEG, but as you can see here, the file size is now 322 kilobytes. So that's much, much smaller than um, what we got, but that doesn't mean that the quality of the image has been, oh, <laughs> it's really big, has been squashed as well. So um, WordPress in general, and it does depend on what um, plugins you have, the, the content delivery network, um, like with Jetpack, for example, is programmed to make the images smaller, yes, but not sacrifice the quality of the images in general.
Yes, yeah, some people, so Martin says that they've been using um, image management plugins to manage this. Some people prefer to use things other than what I just what I just noted. I don't have any other off the top of my head, sorry, <laughs> to to share um, plugin wise. But in general, especially with your host, I would imagine that they're um, not squashing the image quality, um, but they are reducing the size in general. Shrinking that saves time. Mm -hmm. No, that's a good question. I feel like there's probably a, a webinar as well about media and WordPress, and I can try to dig that up for you all. Because I'm, I'm, I haven't dabbled in that for a bit, to be honest. So um, I can do a little hunting and see if there's something that gives a more clear recommendation on how you should approach that. Yeah, you're welcome, Sandra. Okay, so jumping back in to a page, this page I believe has a list for us. Yes, great. So there were a couple other things I wanted to show you here. One of those things being the improved block locking and also some of the enhanced blocks. So for example here, it was hard to see in my slides, but list, right? You can see now that each listed item has its own kind of, I'm calling it a sub block. That's not an official term, but it feels like a, a sub block <laughs> to me. <laughs> so but this allows you to more easily adjust your, your listed items going forward. You can do that by dragging and dropping. You can do that by using these little arrows. Um, so before, I believe it was difficult because you essentially had to copy what was in that line erase that line, go behind one line, do a space, an enter, and then paste <laughs> the new list item. It was very painful. Martin's like, yes, I remember those days, like five days ago. Um, so now we don't have to do that, <laughs> which is really good. Um, and then also something that came up in the other session was, you know, if you wanted to break this list, it'll still have your other list items nestled in the new list block. Um, some people were saying a use case of maybe having a separator in here. Maybe you have a recipe that you're putting together and you you're want to separate making the sauce from actually doing the baking. <laughs> that might be a very useful uh, way of just putting all those steps all together first and then you can break away and have separate lists later. So pain-free list management, and then also uh, the quote block. So I'm going to do a backslash quote. And as we were noting, you can now just choose the type of block you want to put in here. If I felt like it, I could also just drag my list into there. And hello, we've got a quoted list. You can also do an a, when you're nestled in, I'm going to do insert before, and then I'm going to maybe do a heading here. And we'll have a nestled list. So there's more flexibility. And then if you wanted to be wild, like I was in my example, you can uh, put a quote within a quote, and maybe even a quote within a quote, quote section, I was calling it. All right, Martin has found the answer for us. Thank you. So regarding media and images, scaling down large images happens only for images which are larger than the big underscore image underscore size underscore threshold. And they've linked some details in the chat that I'll share along with the um, video of this. Thank you. I love it, working together to find the answers. Okay, but here we are. Those are the improvements for the quote and the um, list block that I wanted to share with you. We also had uh, locking that was particular to columns and 
cover block and groups. So for example, if I wanted to group these three together and what I just did there is I clicked quote and I did shift and clicked list. So that selected all of those items for me, kind of how you would expect in any word processor to do. And then from here, I'm going to click on this double square item and group it. So now we've got a group here. And if we click in, you can see the items I selected. And then from here, we're gonna click on lock. And that's where you'll see that you can apply locks to you know, all. You can apply these changes to all the blocks inside. Um, if you didn't wanna do that, you could oops, do some individual locking and you see the apply to all goes away when you do that. So this will just give you a bit more protection against uh, a large amount of changes, not content wise, uh, as I was talking about, oops, you can see there that there's um, some content that was adjusted. But if I'm trying to move it around, for example, you can see that I am not able to do that. And I can unlock the group or adjust the settings. And then. Okay. So those were some of the, if not all the main things. Fluid typography is, is a little hard to show um, in terms of like coding, but to preview, it's essentially when you're adjusting the screen size. How does that look? How does the um, size of your font, for example, change? So if you have gone in and enabled the ability to adjust that within your theme, you can set these settings yourself to be something different than the default. Okay, do we have any questions um, or things folks want to explore that I haven't covered in the back end today? I will do my best. I'll grab another swig of water while I wait. <laughs> So Stefan asks, how can you provide your own CSS? That is a good question. So this, since this is a block theme, most of the stylization should be handled within the theme.json file. And right now I'm just showing you, this is my files. Here. Oops. See, it includes, there's a bunch of things here. Uh, I wanted content themes. And then 2023, for example, you can see there's the style.css file still. But um, there's also the styles variations. So if you're creating what we, if you recall earlier, I, I'm updated to this Marigold. You can add a new theme.json file here to create a, um, a style variation. 
And that's another way where, where you can adjust the look of your site. But as you can see, the style.css is still there. Um, so you can also utilize that for um, some CSS adjustments. How to integrate a new font into a theme. Ooh, that? I'm actually not sure how to do that. I would assume it has some, I have to, I would have to add these files, the, the uh, sorry, the font files in the files that we're kind of looking at now. But at the top of my head, I don't know how to do that right now. Um, but I will find a guide for that for you. Yeah, I do want to point out too, since we're on CSS, there's, you see here, I've, I've just clicked on a block um, and you can see additional CSS classes. So there's space here to add more classes and then you can stylize it within the um, file itself. And that's a way to target your, your stylization. So Martin also asks, am I correct that automatic conversion of JPEG images into WebP images is not included in WordPress 6.1? That is correct. Um, WebP, let me get you the latest on that. It was not included in 6.1 automatically. And there was also a, a very, very recent um, conversation about this on .org about that. I think it's still on the way. There's just, of course, a lot of considerations that people are taking seriously in the project and they wanna make sure everyone's voice is heard here and, and considerations um, are made. So let me, where was that? Well, I'm looking for that. I'll have to dig that recent article up later. It's not coming up immediately. I want to make sure I get you the, the right information okay. here. So I've added that to my to-do list. Web P on by default with 6.1 question mark. So Martin asks, I'm running a number of block plugins to make up for lack of functionality of prior versions of WordPress. Will these plugins still be compatible? Ooh. So Martin, I will always say for, you say, you scare me when you say a number of block plugins. So first of all, um, definitely try to see if now there's any equivalent within a block theme um, or a block that you can create yourself for the theme. Um, that you can be using instead. I think over time, plugin, block plugin cap compatibility, if it's trying to substitute um, or sub if it's trying to supplement add on, I think that's usually fine. But if it's not using um, the latest technology, essentially, then it might be overbearing on the site. So Gutenberg is also a plugin that extends block um, functionality. And there's things in the Gutenberg plugin that's not yet in WordPress core, but that is a plugin where it's being, the latest blocks are being developed and prepped for release. So you, if you don't have that installed, that might be something to test on a local or staging environment to see if some of the blocks that you're using in, um, your numerous <laughs> block plugins might actually be coming, or um, if you haven't checked out what blocks are available now, um, you might just want to use some of the defaults. You, I definitely have what, yeah, page builders. There's still, yeah, ooh, that's a whole nother conversation, you know, um, with the page builders. So Miguel asks, does creating a child theme make sense? And if so, what files are needed? 
So yes, it can make sense, Miguel. And actually in my last session, let me see if I have the direct link. Um, Cause when you update the parent theme and if that's what you have modified, you know, there might be some changes to what you've done if you don't have a child theme. Um, and there's now more simple ways to create child theme, child block themes, like with this create block theme plugin. Um, it allows you to create a new theme, blank theme, or ch child theme or style variation. So that's a pretty powerful plugin to get you started on your way there um, without having to start from scratch. So Martin noted that there is something in the making regarding giving users an interface for registering and managing web fonts. That is hot off the press seven days ago. So thank you for that. That sounds amazing to have a font library. I think that's what everyone would love. Um, future, future state, if you could create your own font and then add that, that'd be amazing. Um, but as it stands, it would still have to be um, added either via plugin or through the, the theme files. I'm just scrolling up, see if I missed anything. So Sandra said that they can reach additional CSS if you paste customize.php in the URL. What? Is that still a bit, is that like a hidden trick? <laughs> I'm gonna just try that for the record here. Look at you. Although it's saying, but you can do site editing with blocks. This is where you could manage the um, additional CSS. So, so that is a pretty interesting hack. I guess it's not a hack if it's still available, um, but yeah. Other settings you probably don't want to mess with here, but the additional CSS still exists. Oh, awesome. So Miguel noted that the create block theme plugin also allows you to embed local font assets in your theme. Woo -woo. Yes, that sounds like a success. I'll look for your name in the, the theme repository when you've, when you've released your new theme. Okay, so we are getting close to time. I, I don't mind until if we fill the time completely, but I do wanna share with you some final housekeeping items. Oh, and you don't have to be looking at Lorem Ipsum, but <laughs> uh, continued learning. I always like to share a couple things to try. Um, really anything that I shared with you today, I hope you feel empowered to go tinker and see what you can do either in your local environment or your staging site that's live. Um, but yeah, try, if you are technically savvy, create a custom post type um, or try to create a new taxonomy template. And play with those new design tools. I know I'm probably going to be doing that over the weekend. Um, and then if you're more technical, or you can use that plugin, try adding a new vari a global styles variation. Um, there's more things you could try, of course, um, but here's just a few things to kind of get you tinkering a bit more. And if you have a moment, I would greatly appreciate you taking this link. Um, the training team, which works closely with Learn WordPress, which brings you uh, these sessions, has a survey out for individual learners such as yourself, just kind of asking, how do you like to learn? What is your learning style? What content do you prefer um, when you're learning? 
um, so that we can better curate and create content for all WordPress learners. So if you have just a moment, I would really appreciate you to take this in your own time. And if you would like to stay connected with me, um, here's some, some links to do that. I live on the Make WordPress Slack, but here's a few other places. The session will be available not on Learn WordPress. Um, it'll be added to WordPress.tv. And so after this session, probably tomorrow, I should have the video ready for you all. I'll upload that to WordPress TV. I will also include the slides that I shared today. And um, I will shoot that off in a message in Meetup. Um, other, other housekeeping, if you're interested. Uh, we, these online workshops, if you were like, hey, I, I knew a lot of these answers, maybe I could put one of these on. Uh, we're always looking for new volunteers to facilitate the session. It could be honestly on whatever you like. I'm going to stop my share here as well and stop recording. Um, your choice of what you would like to present.